Hello, my name is Alan Chavinas, and I will be talking about Bitcoin. Um, first, a little bit about me. I study at the University of London. I study mathematical engineering. I do not represent the University of London, but uh, math math mathematical engineering is a wide subject. One of the subdomains is cryptography. I have a little background in cryptography and a lot of interest. And that is where my interest in Bitcoin stems from. The other uh, part where my interest in Bitcoin stems from is obviously my interest in Austrian economics. So, let's look at what we'll be talking about. Um, first, I'll have a short introduction to explain what Bitcoin is. Then I'll actually show how it can be used with an example. Then I'll talk about the features and I'll compare it afterwards to two sorts of money that we know, and then I'll discuss properties that make it viable or not viable as money. So what is Bitcoin anyway? Right now we have fiat money, and one way or another in the end we're going to have gold. But the government is not going to allow the straightest path towards a gold money. And Bitcoin is a strange beast somewhere on that path because it originated on the marketplace and it has absolutely nothing to do with the government. In fact, the government cannot control it whatsoever. So, in a nutshell, Bitcoin is a free market, decentralized internet currency. Free market means that it originated on the marketplace, you need the internet to use Bitcoin. Decentralized is there is no central point through which all information must pass. Bitcoin is pseudonymous because the, a Bitcoin account does not identify its owner. And it has fixed inflation. I'll get to these features in more detail later. Just for now remember that it is an internet currency. A simple example how Bitcoin might be used. Alice and Bob agree on an exchange. Bob wants to sell, to sell a shoe against a Bitcoin, but Alice does not have Bitcoin, she has fiat money. So, the first thing Alice must do is create a Bitcoin account. How do you create a Bitcoin account? You go to www.bitcoin.org, download the client, install the client, and run it. It's that simple. If you do that, then you have a Bitcoin account. Next, she has to acquire Bitcoins. So she goes to an exchange window, or an exchange service, like Bitomat or Matgox, and she exchanges her fiat money against Bitcoin, which will be put in her account. As soon as she, as she has Bitcoins, she needs Bob's Bitcoin address. Just like you need uh, another person's bank account number in order to make a bank transaction, you need a Bitcoin account number to make a Bitcoin transaction. When she has Bob's Bitcoin address, she broadcasts the transaction to the entire world. This can all happen via, via the application, the Bitcoin application. She publicizes the details of the transaction to the world. The buyer, the seller, the sender and recipient of the amount of bitcoins to be transferred. The price, the number of bitcoins to be, the amount of bitcoins to be transferred and an optional transaction fee. Everybody, the entire bitcoin community, learns of this transaction that's part of the design. The transaction is not valid until the community says so. I'll get into how exactly it says so later. It's not valid until the community says so. Once the community validates the transaction, Bob is said to have so many bitcoins more in his account, and that's when Bob can send his shoe over to Alice, and the transaction was completed. So, before we delve a little bit deeper into the features, let's get this out of the way. A Bitcoin does not exist. Just like 
a meter per second does not exist. Meters per second is the unit in which a physical quantity is measured. In the same sense, bitcoins is the unit in which your balance is measured. Wikipedia is misleading in this respect. It constantly refers to bitcoins being transferred from one account to another. I would prefer to say that one account decreases in balance and another account increases in balance. There is a distinction, a very clear distinction between a Bitcoin user and the Bitcoin community. A Bitcoin user is one person who has one account and can decide what to do with his own Bitcoins. The Bitcoin community is everybody who uses Bitcoins. Everybody. Bitcoins are mined. That's how they come into existence. Just like a physical gold miner with a pickaxe, he has to put a lot of work into mining a bit of gold. So a Bitcoin miner has to put a lot of computational work into mining Bitcoins. I'll get to that in more detail later. Next, there is a record of all history of the entire Bitcoin community called the blockchain. All history of every transaction is publicly accessible by anyone. Features. So, what does it mean it is a digital currency? Well, obviously you need to, you need to have a computer to access it. Your wallet is a computer program. And you need the internet to interface with the rest of the community. Absent internet and absent a computer, you cannot use Bitcoin. So third world countries will not be able to use Bitcoin at any rate. What does decentralized mean? Well, it exists of many, many nodes who talk to each other. But there is no central point through which all information must pass. All information is duplicated at every node. It is nearly impossible to take down. You cannot take down one central server and take down the entire Bitcoin community. That's not possible. If one node dies, Bitcoin will continue to exist. That's one of its great advantages because the government won't be able to take it down should it want to. And they will doubtlessly try. I said it was pseudonymous. But what does that exactly mean? Well, anonymity means that you that nobody know, knows who you are or what you do. Pseudonymity is they know what you say, what you do, what you have done, what you have said, but they can't link it to you. And that's how Bitcoin works. A Bitcoin address does not identify its owner. But given a Bitcoin address, you can say, you can tell which transactions have occurred from which addresses to which addresses. If the government sees, aha, this person has made two million dollars in Bitcoin, worth of Bitcoins, and he's not filed a tax return, they're going to try and figure out who he is. Fixed inflation is one of the most important features of Bitcoin. Um, fixed inflation, every four years, more or less, the rate of inflation halves. The rate of inflation is, mathematical, is a mathematical formula uh, dependent on the number of, of blocks uh, that have been created. I'll get to that later. Uh, just remember, for now, right now we are, we are uh, at 7 uh, million bitcoins. In 2013, the rate will halve once. In 2017, it will halve again. And we will never have more than 21 million bitcoins ever. Fractional um, reserve lending is impossible. Bitcoin cannot be quantitatively eased. There is no multiplier effect. Inflation is perfectly predictable. By inflation, I mean expansion of the monetary base. 
obviously. So how do Bitcoins come into existence? Well, there's this thing called the blockchain, which contains all the history of the entire economy. And guess it? It is a chain of blocks. Every block refers to its predecessor, so you have a chain of blocks. And what is a block? A block is, in essence, a haystack problem. Imagine you have a haystack and a couple of needles in, and you need to find those needles. It's a very time-consuming process to find those needles because you have to take it apart straw by straw. Mining is, in essence, a computer program that looks for that needle, and if it finds the needle, it publishes the block, and the miner gets so many bitcoins for having found the needle. Right now, the amount of bitcoins you get if you find a valid block is 50, in 2013, it will have, so then it will be 25. So let's, let's compare Bitcoin to kinds of money we, we already know. Let's start with fiat money. I split it up in fiat bank money and fiat cash money because, as you will see, there are a couple of differences. Firstly, Bitcoin is pseudonymous. A Bitcoin account does not identify its owner, whereas bank money, there is absolutely no anonymity in bank money. A bank account does identify its owner. A bank account is perfectly traceable where the where all the money came from, by law. On the other hand, fiat money is perfect. Fiat cash money is perfectly anonymous. Anonymous. You cannot trace cash. You can't tell where it came from. Of a given dollar or coin, you can't tell who its owner is. That's perfect, un perfect anonymity. Uh, Bitcoin is almost final. What do I mean by final? This, with this I refer to a single transaction. One transaction, once it has occurred, can very cannot be undone. It has to do with how blocks are mined. If someone finds more blocks than all the rest of the community, in theory, it is possible to undo a, a transaction. But this probability is so insanely small. You can consider uh, a transaction to be final after a couple of minutes. On fiat bank money, uh, there is a six-month reversal uh, period. This is actually very deadly to startups who don't have a large margin and people tend to scam other people in an eBay fashion using this uh, six month reversal period. Cash money is, is perfectly final, obviously. You hand over cash and that's the end of the transaction. Uh, you can only get it back if you acquire that person's consent or by using force. Bitcoin is dependent on the community. That is to say, a transaction can only have occurred if the rest of the community validates the transaction. Bank money is dependent on the bank. A bank transaction is said to have occurred if both banks involved, or the one bank involved, acknowledge that, acknowledges that the transaction has occurred. Fiat cash money is perfectly isolated. There is no third party involved in fiat cash money. Financial aspects. Bitcoin ha has controlled inflation. The rate of inflation is a mathematical formula. Whereas fiat bank money and fiat cash money, inflation is not controllable, except for cash. Cash is backed by the paper cost. If worst comes to worst, you can burn the cash up and you get warmth as utility instead of being able to buy something with it. Bitcoin, the validity of, of the Bitcoin system depends on cryptographic principles and design principles. If, if a cryptographic algorithm is broken or if one of those design principles appear to be flawed, Bitcoin is dead. But this is very, very unlikely because a lot of very smart minds 
have been, been talking about these cryptographic algorithms for a very long time, and the design principles may be quite new, but they do seem solid. Bank money depends on private banks, who also use cryptographic algorithms, but they have a vested interest to keep them up to date. If two banks use cryptographic algorithms and one use a flawed alg algorithm, the one with a flawed algorithm will go bankrupt. Cash money depends on the central bank because it's linked to bank money. So where do each derive their value from? Very important question. The first thing is gadgety for Bitcoin. What do I mean by gadgety? Gadgety is the reason why everybody wants the new iPhone. It's new, it's cool, it's technological, it's interesting how it works. And that excites a lot of people who are already interested in, in cryptography and who are already interested in some means of subverting the government fiat money. <laughs> Whereas um, fiat money is legal tender, the law supports it as tender in payment of debt. Bitcoin derives value from speculation, which is actually speculation against the value of the dollar and the euro. Whereas the value of fiat money, in this respect, derives its value from uh, the momentum of the economy. What do I mean by momentum? Momentum refers to the, the ability to resist change. You use fiat money right now because it has value right now, and there's a time lapse between when you get the money and when you pay the money. I can tell you for certain that gold will be in use in a hundred years because it has a very large momentum. Fiat money has a smaller momentum, but it's larger than Bitcoin. And lastly, taxes are not due in Bitcoin, and they are not due in cash, but they are due in bank transfer, bank money. You can't go with a bag of cash to the government and say, you have my tax return. So let's compare Bitcoin to gold. Gold is anonymous. Since it's, it's something physical, it can be marked, but those marks can be undone. Gold is perfectly anonymous. You can hand it over to someone else. It's untraceable when that happens. Bitcoin is anonymous, like we already saw. Physical gold is perfectly fine. If the transaction has occurred, again, you need to you need to get the other person's consent to get your gold back or use force. Whereas Bitcoin is almost final. There's that very low probability that it gets undone. Bitcoin is dependent on the community. A, a transaction is said to have occurred if the community validates it. Whereas physical goal is independent. Once the transaction has occurred, it has occurred. Financial aspect. Bitcoin is controlled inflation. The inflation is a mathematical formula. Whereas there is a fixed amount of gold. A very minor quantity is being mined. But this is um, very small in relation to Bitcoin. Bitcoin depends on cryptography and design principles, whereas gold depends on nothing. Um, you either want it or you don't want it, but if you do want it, you can have it. There is nothing that makes gold valid as such. Where do they derive value from? Bitcoin, again, is gadgety, and gold, again, is has a lot of momentum. Much more momentum than fiat money. It has 6,000 years of momentum. That momentum is not going to go away. Bitcoin uh, derives its value from speculation, again, and gold does also. A lot of people bet against uh, the dollar and the euro through gold instead of through Bitcoin, or through Bitcoin instead of gold. They're, they're complementary in this sense. If you, don't, if you don't trust fiat money, either one will do. Then gold has one source where it derives value from that Bitcoin does not. 
as insurance against economic turmoil, a hedge, as it were, against bad economic conditions. And the last thing is physical demand. Uh, you should think of jewelry, necklaces, and, and rings. How many of you have a, a, a gold ring? <laughs> there you go, that's some uh, physical demand. So, the liability as money. I already explained how it can be used to buy something, and in fact it is being used to buy plenty of things. But will it last and will it flourish? That question boils down to, is there enough confidence in Bitcoin? Every money works or doesn't work because of confidence in it. And confidence falls apart into four categories. Confidence in the medium, in the provider, in the users, and in the government. Let's start with the medium. Confidence in the medium, in the case of fiat money, is confidence that it, that it will stay there and keep its value. But of course, fiat money can burn to ashes and then it's gone. Fiat money can um, disappear, you can lose it. It's rather difficult to lose bitcoins. People have succeeded. If you, of course, you lose uh, your computer or you lose the program on your computer, then you've lost your bitcoin, obviously. The provider, in the case of fiat money, is the central bank. They print the money. In the case of Bitcoin, it is the entire Bitcoin community. They provide you with a Bitcoin service, as it were. Confidence in the users to keep using Bitcoin. Will they? Good question. I don't know the answer. They might. Confidence in the government. I think it is very likely that the government will crack down on anything that attacks the government money, that undermines the government money. I don't think the government will like Bitcoin once they learn enough about it. But of course, the time will tell if it is viable as money. So, that was almost my presentation. Let's quickly summarize. We saw Bitcoin in action, a uh, simple transaction using Bitcoin. We briefly uh, discussed the bit features of Bitcoin, how it is digital, decentralized, pseudonymous, and inflationary, but in a controlled way. We compared Bitcoin to fiat money, Bitcoin to fiscal gold, and we discussed the viability of Bitcoin as money. Thank you very much. That was my